Hello everyone, I'm Kevin Benjamin. I've been in the bobblehead groups here for about four years and have traded with a lot of you. I'm about to make a trade with somebody who is new and has never packed up a bobblehead that does not have its box. So I'm going to go through the process that it takes to properly pack a bobblehead without its original box because the last thing both of us want to have is an issue when the bobblehead gets to you and it's broken because not what the post office did or UPS or FedEx but we want to try to make everything do whatever we possibly can so when we drop off the bobblehead we packed it perfectly so this is what you're going to do I got two sizes of bubble wrap the big bubbles and the small bubbles okay the first thing you do is wrap the neck. So what we want to do is, now this is a very heavy Tampa Bay Lightning Thunderbug mascot. It's worth about $20 to $30 plus shipping. You figure $40, 30 to 40 bucks shipped. Nobody wants to lose $20. Okay? It doesn't matter if the bobblehead is a $20 one or a $150 one. You want to be able to pack it properly so it gets there as safe as possible. So what we're going to do first is wrap his neck. So you take the thin bubble wrap, the thin bubble wrap with the tiny bubbles, okay, and you uh, cut out a nice strip along sideways, okay. Now this guy's head is super he top heavy, okay. So I'm going to actually take two of these. I'm going to make two of these and wrap, wrap him twice because you don't want the head to be mobile during shipping at all. And you just take a little teeny bit of tape and I just usually put it right on my knee right there. And then I start with my thumb and I wrap him so the bubble wrap isn't like uh, squeezing up. You want to kind of push it along uh, his shoulders, no matter what kind of bobblehead it is, just so it covers the whole head area above it, and then you kind of tuck it underneath its head, okay, to make it snug, and like I said, this guy's really heavy, and his beak goes out pretty far, so I'm going to wrap him a little bit, another one, okay, and then as you can see, it's all snug right there and then I'm just taking this, this piece of tape and remember you don't want to put the tape on where it's going to touch the paint because it, it could take off the paint. So now his, he's all wrapped, his neck is all wrapped but you know what, look, he's still mobile. So this is how we wrap him in the bubble wrap, okay? Have a long strip like this and what we do is we wrap him first elongated. So I put him down like this, head to toe, toe to toe to head, and measure a piece of bubble wrap that goes over his entire body. Okay. So it goes over his entire body. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put him in the middle. I'm going to take the top part and I'm going to grab the bottom of the base. And I'm going to snugly put that where he should be because I want the tape to be kind of in the middle. So I'm going to scoot him down just a little bit more. So you want your bubble wrap to cover his entire body and then you want to tape him uh, so it's snug. So basically I'm going to go with a piece of tape here and put it there and then I'm going to Wrap him snug. Now this is the important part because the whole bottom line is to make his head immobile during shipping. The whole thing should be him scrunched up basically. So I put my piece of tape on the top or the bottom. Okay, I like to do it on top. And then I take the bottom and I pull, not too too hard, but snug enough so you could feel that he is not moving. And then you push the tape in there and you can see, you can actually see that the plastic is being pulled. So he is not moving in there. 
and then you go side to side. Okay, you don't want to you want to rip off pieces of tape. You don't want to wrap them with the tape gun because you could break it. So now I got a piece of tape, two pieces actually, and I'm going to wrap him side to side now. I'm going to pull the top part over, I'm going to hold it, and then I'm going to pull the bottom part over and hold it, and then I'm going to tape both sides. Okay, you just slap the tape on because this isn't the final thing. So now he's basically all top heavy, uh, all wrapped up as far as it being immobile. And then you can go side to side or basically just roll him up like this in the big or the small bubbles. Obviously that's not enough. So I got to go a little bit more because the box that I'm using is probably a standard box. This one's 11 by 8 by 5, okay? So you're going to bubble wrap the hell out of it, basically. It, wrap him better than your baby, okay? So basically, it's going to fit, but it's still going to be moving in the box. We don't want him to move at all. I mean, absolutely not. Whether you... Here, once you pack him in the bubble wrap and you see that he's good to go like that, okay, that he's not moving inside, and just keep wrapping him in bubbles. I like to go long ways, okay, and then I'm going to have, I got some more here, so I'm going to uh, go back the other way. This one's actually a bag, okay, so I'm just going to kind of wrap him on, like that. But the bottom line is the part that <laughs> is wrapping him to make him immobile during shipping. So now, it's basically fits in the box, it's, it ain't moving. It, it, it ain't moving. So I go like that and pack it, and then what I do, what I do, because I freak out once I uh, drop off the box and just pray to God that it gets to you in one piece, I wrap him in duct tape across the, both both seams I go vertical and horizontal around the whole box and then I write fragile glass please do not drop or crush okay and then a lot of people don't but I wrap the entire thing in in the clear tape I, once I put fragile and I put the label on uh, I carefully you know Put the tape over the barcode so it doesn't bubble or crease up, you know, sometimes you put the tape on. So basically, there's nothing moving inside, okay? And when you write fragile glass, don't overdo it. <laughs> don't, you don't want to piss off the post office, okay? On one side, what I do is I write fragile glass, please do not drop or crush. I do that on both, both of these sides, and then I just write it as a fragile or fragile on both sides uh, of the ends, and then I write, you know, please do not drop or crush and fragile glass on the bottom, as well as fragile and glass on the top. You can never be too careful. And once you drop it off, and you know that you did everything in your power to make it safe for you, then it's out of your hands. So once you establish that trust with somebody, and a lot of people trust each other in the group, I've traded with people for the last four years, and I don't even, you know, we don't even worry about shipping. Okay, we just give each other's address and boom, our thing shows up. But here's the clincher, folks. Communication in this group is key when you're making a trade or you're selling something. Okay? In my experience, if you make a trade on a Friday, okay, and you can't send it out Saturday, and you said that you were going to send it out Saturday, you need to tell that person, hey, I couldn't send it out today, I'm going to send it out Monday. Because it doesn't matter how long it takes you to send it out, we want it shipped out as soon as possible. Okay? The key to this trade stuff is communication. Okay? You got to be communicative. You have to. Because I've waited three days after a trade and the guy hasn't even you know, give me the tracking number yet, and he's like, oh, I got the kids and everything. Well, don't make a trade unless you can ship it out in a day or two or the following Monday or Tuesday over the weekend, okay? Don't make a trade on a Wednesday 
and say you're going to trade it, and send it out in the next couple days, and then all of a sudden it's Monday or Tuesday, and there's no tracking number yet on your end. Okay, so if you're going to make a trade, try to send it out within a day or two. Okay, if you can't, just be you know, text the person and let them know what's up. We all have families and stuff like that, and jobs and stuff. We know that this is a hobby and a side thing, but the main thing here is to make each other happy. Okay. And I've seen a lot of weird shit in this group where people are pissing each other off. And once you get like some people that you can trade with and you can uh, trust, the trust factor is very important, obviously. Okay. It really, I've, I've literally built my entire collection off going to the flea market and then coming back and making trades for ones that I want. Okay. Because... I call myself a poor man's collector. I don't have the glass shelves, the Ikea shelves. I have $5 shelves that I got at the thrift store or the flea market. But I built my collection off uh, the ground. Uh, you know, people uh, have estate sales and things like that, garage sales. I go to those and I pick them up. And then the ones that I want, I keep. The ones that I don't. Somebody else may want them, and if you have looked at any of my stuff, I've accumulated like 30 or 40 of them over the last four years. Uh, some of them I've had on the trade pile for a year. So the bottom line is duct tape across the seams. I wrap the whole box. It takes time, okay? So if you're sending out five or six, just make sure you cover the duct tape because the uh, postal people don't like the duct tape being... You know, you can mess up the whole box if it gets caught on something, so be careful with that. That's why I wrap the whole box in, in the clear tape after I uh, put the label on and everything. So, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, uh, you know, feel free to uh, shoot me off a text. But that's pretty much it. And uh, happy bobble hunting, and hopefully uh, the 2024 baseball season will be lucrative for, for everybody around the country. Sayonara.